Um, so welcome everyone to the AIGA Design Education Community um, Virtual Roundtable for July of 2021. Uh, this uh, writing table roundtable is called Writing Together. Um, and we're going to be talking about lots of ways to think about writing groups as well as accountability partners and ways to just kind of ramp up and get started with your writing and, and have someone to be accountable to. So um, before we get started, I'm going to share my screen really quickly um, because I do want to remind everyone um, Shift Ed, which is our, our virtual sum summer summit, is going to be the very first week of August. So the second through the sixth, we're ramping up all of the activity for that. But I just wanted to show this slide really quickly. If you didn't know um, that Shift Ed is coming, um, here's a little bit of information about it. Um, to register, all you do is just join our Slack. If you're already on the Slack, you're already registered. Um, and then you can see the schedule at the link here. And then we've also been putting that into the, the Slack. And so really everything will be running through those two places. There's a lot of really fantastic content. We have amazing panelists from all over the world. We're going to come and speak on all sorts of interesting topics. We've kind of expanded all the offerings. So there are even more live sessions this year. And we also have asynchronous content. And we will record all of the live sessions as well. So that if you can't make it to Shift Ed, you can always catch up on all of that stuff later. Um, so if you have any questions about any of that, please do feel free to contact me. I'm Lisa Zahabi. In case you don't know me or haven't met me before. Um, and I'm one of the steering, steering committee members of the AIGA DEC, and I'm the conference chair for Shift Ed. So if you need to know anything, I'm, I'm the person who will probably have that answer. Um, so, uh, so there's Shift Ed. So I will stop my share. And then, um, then I think we'll just jump right into this session. So the first thing I wanted to do, um, I'm going to put into the chat a link to a Miro board. Um, so please feel free to go join that. Um, a link to the presentation file we're going to get to in a minute is in there, as well as some other places where you can put info and ask questions and things like that. Um, but I wanted to give um, my panelists uh, a chance to introduce themselves. Um, so again, I'm Lisa Zahabi. Uh, I am at the University of New Hampshire. Hampshire. This is, I just finished my third year um, at the University of New Hampshire, um, but I've been teaching for 11 years in higher ed, um, which is a very long time. And I've done lots of writing groups at all of the different institutions that I've been a part of. Um, so, uh, so that's sort of my background. Um, Anne, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, thank you, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I teach at, at Cleveland State University, and one of my colleagues is here. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. I was happy to see your lovely face. Um, so I, this is my first tenure track position, um, but like Lisa, I, I taught at another institution for several years. So I um, have not had not been part of writing groups prior to my tenure track appointment, um, but I'll, I'll have more to say about that later. But um, that, that kind of sort of frames the conversation of why I started um, seeing the value in participating in these groups. There was a little bit more pressure, but um, yeah, I've been teaching at Cleveland for the last six, five, six years, five and a half years. Crazy. Time flies. Awesome. And then Audra, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Audra Buck Coleman. Uh, I'm a designer, an educator, a researcher. Um, I use the she, her pronouns. I have light skin. Um, for those who may not be able to see me, I have light brown hair and have on a blue and black sort of checkered uh, shirt. Um, and so I am in the middle of writing two books and I am no, I used most recently taught at University of Maryland College Park. I've taught design education goodness for about 20 years, not quite uh, full time and some part time stuff thrown in there. So I'm all, you know, uh, uh, have some experience teaching in the tenure process, but um, writing has been um, sort of the second half, I would say, of my uh, uh, design education, academia career. And I've, like Lisa said, I've been in a variety of writing groups. Um, I found them really helpful, really supportive. Um, and I'm excited to be talking about them with you today. 
Fabulous. Thank you so much, Anne and Audra. So um, as I said, I have a really quick presentation that I wanted to just share with everyone. Um, I will be giving this to everyone so you can always go back and revisit it. But hopefully this will just give you an overview if you're not familiar with the concept of writing groups or accountability partners. So I'm going to share my screen one more time. I promise to keep this brief. It's not like a long, detailed lecture. Um, I always have to say that to my students too, and I don't know that they always believe me because I have so much I want to share. So here's the Miro board, um, just in case you decided not to go follow the link. But basically our presentation file is here. You can, and you can ask questions or leave thoughts here. And then at the end, if you want to sign up to join a writing group, um, here's a space for you to be able to do that. And we can talk about that at the end, but let's get into the presentation. So let me hit present. All right, so in case you, hadn't ever heard any of these terms before. Um, I pulled this from good old Wikipedia. Uh, it's also known as a writing circle, and they actually go back quite a ways into history. Um, but pretty much it's just a group of like-minded people uh, who are seeking support for their work. Um, so a lot of times writing groups and writing circles will be looking at giving peer critique, so reading each other's writing and giving feedback. Um, or sometimes they're just about encouragement, right? Knowing that other people are writing can make it seem less hard because we can all hopefully agree writing is hard. It's one of the hardest things that I do. Um, and so you sometimes just need someone to help you get through that. Um, so they there have been a ton of them through history based on location or style of writing or the kinds of writing that you might do. Um, normally, the goal is to improve your own craft, right? So to make your writing better. Um, and generally, that happens by either being accountable to other partners or uh, listening to the work of others, right? Looking at their writing, you learn from that, and then also getting them to look at your own. Um, the other thing that writing groups do is that they build a sense of community, which I think is also super important. Um, so I found this really fantastic link uh, up on Penguin, um, the publisher, and so their designer there put together this really beautiful array of graphics for all these different writing groups through history, and I thought that that was really fun. Uh, and so I just kind of included the gift that they had, but if you follow this link here, um, you can read more. They actually have, um, you know, uh, write-ups for each one of these groups, and they talk about who the members were, and these are all fairly famous writers. Um, and then also the time periods in which they kind of had their writing group and the writing circle. So here are some other terms. So writing group is usually what I call it, but writing circle is also a, a word you could use. Uh, writing club, some people will refer to it as that. Um, and we can also talk about this idea of accountability partners. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a big group. It could also just be one person, right? Who can be, that you can be accountable to. Now, there are a bunch of different ways that you can set up a writing group or accountability partners. Um, and the two main things for everyone to just sort of keep in mind is the distinction between needing someone to help you put your butt in your seat and write, right? So that you know you're gonna commit this time to the act of writing. Um, and then the other kind of writing group is the kind in which you do share each other's work and you read it and get peer critique and peer feedback. So those are really the two big distinctions. Um, some groups are really great for getting you to put your butt in the seat and write. And then sometimes uh, you really just need someone to look at your work and give you feedback and thoughts about it. Um, so, um, so some writers really need one or the other. And then I would say some people need both. Um, and sometimes you can have a group that can do both. But in my experience, it's actually better to separate those. And we can talk about that. Um, you can also have a writing group in a bunch of different modalities, right? So I've been doing mostly virtual writing groups over the last few years, but I've also done in-person ones as well. Um, and so, you know, virtual can happen through any kind of video chat mechanism, but you can also do them through email. You can do them through a Facebook group or Slack, um, or you can also do shared spreadsheets, which Audra kind of added to the presentation file here. And so I know she and Anne both have done these shared spreadsheet style writing groups before. Um, and then in person, I've done them, you know, at a coffee shop or a cafe or more often in a conference room on campus. Um, so both of those techniques work really well. And then additionally, you can also connect with other people asynchronously. So you don't have to meet in real time to still have that accountability 
or you can do it synchronously or both, you know, so sometimes you can do a mixture. I would also say you don't have to really know the members, the other members of your group very well to have that work um, really well. So I've been a member of writing groups that my campus just put together of people from all sorts of different disciplines. So you don't even have to be working with people who are also in design. Um, sometimes it's just enough that you're all trying to write stuff. Um, and that actually can be really helpful because then if they look at your work, they're going to give you a good outside perspective. Um, so you don't really have to know the other members of your group as long as you can trust them um, or, you know, at least both say you trust each other. Um, and so um, it's really just important that you choose people who have similar goals or similar needs in their writing um, that you can trust in that writing context um, and who might share a similar responsibility style, right? So they're really going to be on point and they're going to join the chat when they say they're going to join the chat, right? That kind of thing. Um, and then most importantly, that will actually be available. I've been a part of writing groups where people just kind of duck out all the time and that that doesn't work. Everybody has to be there and they have to be doing what they say they're, they're do, they wanted to do. Otherwise it just doesn't work. It's kind of the same thing with students in the classroom. Okay, so you might be asking how to get started. Um, you can ask your colleagues uh, and or other collaborators you might work with if they wanna form a group. Um, you can also look for local writing groups or meetups online. Um, so when I was doing research to put this presentation together, there were just meetups in my local area popped up of people who wanted to write and they wanted people to be accountable to. Um, you can also see if there is support for writing or writing groups on your campus, because a lot of times um, the centers that are there to, to support research or writing within faculty, they're there to do that, right, to support you in that work. And so I've, I've had the experience where sometimes they're able to help pull a writing group together for you. Um, you can also check out Design Incubation. They have a fantastic writing fellowship, and I know some of you on this call might have been part of that before. Um, but they also have launched an experimental writing group um, uh, mechanism this year. And so you can follow the link and just kind of look for writing groups if you want more information. Um, and then Audra had added this great link. So you can also see if your institution has a membership with the National Center for Faculty Development and Diversity, uh, which uh, they host a writing group. And I think Audra could probably talk about that a little bit more because I think she's been a participant in it. And then also reach out to us, reach out to the DEC on our social media channels. You can connect with other design educators in our Slack uh, and just say, hey, does anybody want to form a writing group? And then one of my goals with this roundtable was also to create a space where people could sign up and then we can kind of act as a matchmaker and try to help formulate some of those groups for everybody. All right, and this is my last slide, oh, my second to last slide. Um, so this is a, the final thing I wanted to say about getting started and then we'll get into our experiences. Um, I think the most important thing to do is to lay some ground rules at the beginning, especially if you're kind of forming a group with some other people without any overarching structure from like your campus. Um, so you wanna decide how you're gonna meet, how often you want to meet and be realistic about that. You want to talk about what your shared goals for the group are, um, and then also you might want to talk about a, a creating a code of conduct to make sure that everybody's sort of on the same page, because when I've run into problems with writing groups, it's because of that. Um, you'll want to choose a format. So are you going to go to a cafe? Are you going to meet for an hour? Are you going to meet on Skype or Zoom? Um, you want to schedule regular sessions. I have found it's not great to say we'll meet once a month. Um, because that's kind of not quite often enough, unless everybody's okay with that. But you also don't want it to be like, well, who knows, we'll meet, you know, in a couple months. Like you want that to be regular so that people know what to expect. Um, and I've also found it's really helpful to focus on goals and a schedule for just one semester at a time. Everybody's schedule changes, right, from semester to semester, and our goals kind of ebb and flow. So kind of looking at that one chunk, you know, or looking at the summer, um, I think is a really good way to kind of proceed. And then again, you really want to make sure everybody's being realistic about their ability to commit, because there's nothing worse than having someone who just sort of flakes out on you all the time. It's very sort of not motivating. Um, okay. Uh, oh, I lied. There was one more. So uh, 
writing resources. Oh, it's because somebody else added these. Thank you, whoever added these. This is amazing. Um, so there are these great resources. Um, we've got the Freedom app, which which if you haven't heard of is fantastic because you can set it up so that it won't allow you to like go in and check your Facebook. <laughs> it sort of keeps you from those bad habits a lot of us have. Whenever I feel my writing, it's getting overwhelming and I'm just like, my brain's like, I can't do this. Um, Facebook is my go-to. So having the Freedom app is very helpful. Um, the Forest app, which I don't know anything about. And so um, whoever added this, maybe you should talk about it. Was it you, Anne? Tell yeah, us yeah, about it was, these apps. It, it was me. I was going to say, I can, I can actually just circle back to this after, after you get through your slides. But yes, I added, I added these items. So I can talk about them later. You are amazing. Thank you. So yeah, we can definitely come back to these. Um, but my last slide was really just, um, was really just this. So let me explain what you're looking at. And hopefully Audra and Anne aren't mad at me. But these are just uh, screen grabs I did while I was working with Audra and Anne over the last couple of weeks. Um, and this is what it looks like. So I work with Audra. She and I are accountability partners. We meet pretty much twice a week, every week. And we've been doing that for a very long time. Um, and so we meet usually over Skype, but sometimes over Zoom. And this is what I see in the corner while I'm working is Audra's face or just movement in the screen. I don't look at her the whole time. That would be weird and creepy, but I just see her and then I know she's there and it keeps me on track and then same vice versa. And then Anne has also been doing these amazing Zoom sessions where she lets people drop in and then same thing. It's just so nice to see other people also working and puzzling and thinking um, while you're working. Um, and so this is just one way that, that the three of us have done writing groups. And so what I wanted to do in this space now is just talk about our experiences. Um, so I can stop my share, but I can bring up that slide again, Anne, if you want me to. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to open up the floor and see Anne, Audra, Tell us about the writing groups that you've been a member of, and then we are definitely going to make space for questions from our, our audience as well. So you all can ask us the things that you would like to know about writing groups as well. But but, but Anne, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I was going to say I'll go ahead and start. So I I really got started because CSU Cleveland State University offered this a workshop called the Write Habit, and uh, W R I T E of course, and that actually completely changed my life. Um, and there were other new faculty there, like faculty that I'd gotten to know during orientation. And the gist of this was, I mean, we went through, it was a full day workshop. And so we actually went through the practice of writing during the workshop, but in between there were lectures about, you know, writing practices. Um, but the, really the huge takeaway for me was um, the, the facilitator emphasized how important accountability is if you wanna get things done. Um, and so a group of us new faculty who were acquainted at, immediately after the end of the workshop, we got together and were like, we need to do this. And we were given a really helpful tool, which is a writing log, which um, it's basically an Excel spreadsheet that, that calculates. Um, so I've, I've actually been using that for the past five, five and a half years. Um, of logging my writing time. Um, you know, sometimes I have to estimate, but but I try to be as faithful to it as I can um, because it's an it's an account a way to be accountable. So we the the group was really uh, for accountability primarily. And so once a once a week, we would check each other's writing logs. So if somebody hadn't logged for a few days, you know, you just leave a note, hey, I hope things are going okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, sadly, our group of four has dwindled down to two, um, but Celeste and I, uh, one of our members, she, she actually, she had a baby and plus the pandemic, you know, I think her, she, she's still um, in the loop, um, but it, it's basically now uh, one of my colleagues, um, myself, and we're, we're still checking on a regular basis. Um, and Celeste and I actually also write together online. And we also used to meet in person to write. So there, and, well, and our third member too, Shireen, like we would meet when when we were able. And so it's it's multi level in terms of the 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 commitment. Um, but but to you know to Lisa's point regarding some of the things that she's uh, mentioned in her slides, I find that I need that accountability in order to stay focused. Um, because I think my experience is that there are actually aspects of writing that I really enjoy. Um, I will say, I think I'm a pretty good writer, 
um, but that doesn't make the writing process any easier. And especially when it comes to academic writing, um, and Sarah can Sarah Rutherford, who's here, can can sort of attest to this um, because we we've, we've also been in a writing and accountability group together. That um, you know, it can feel very isolating, but but then the the challenge of learning how to do the academic writing is also a challenge. And so what I have found is that it's it's important to have these groups with other people in the design profession who are maybe struggling with some of the same things. Um, but it's also equally important to have writers like meet writing groups with people who are outside of the discipline. Um, so the, the two accountability partners that I've had for the last several years um, with, the, with the writing logs there, one is in psychology and one is in social work. And that has been hugely important for me and they have become such an amazing resource um, because even though our, our disciplines are very different, um, they've, they've really inspired me with the amount of writing that they're doing, the ways in which they're, um, you know, they're, they're, again, their disciplines are very different in terms of the expectations, but that's really helped me navigate academic writing in particular. Um, trying to make sure I hit all the things that I want to talk about. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the main thing for me has been that even though, um, I, writing is something that I, I feel like I can do, that it's a skill that I have that doesn't make the discipline of doing it any easier. And so I find it comforting when I am, know that I need to be writing to see some other faces in my corner on, on my screen and they are working away. And that's a reminder that, that I've committed myself to this and I know how prolific these other people are. And so I need to get my game on. Um, so those are just sort of a, a few things I will, I will open with and I, I'm happy to, uh, oh, quickly the apps. Um, so the resources, Freedom app. Um, I use this one. I, you know, I had to end up paying for it, but it was so worthwhile for me. It's a definitely a financial investment that I, I um, found to be worthwhile because you can really there the tool provides lots of ways to really uh, customize the your limitations so that you know I still have access to online resources but I can't look in Slack, I can't look in my email, I can't text. So the level of specificity of which you can like make sure that you're not able to check certain applications and programs is really, really wonderful. So I can't recommend that one enough. That, that's like my go-to when I'm super distracted um, and really wanna check the news and it just doesn't let me. Um, the Forest app is a new one that I um, learned about through another writing group. Um, and somebody that I've collaborated on a project with, uh, Leslie Ann Noel. So it, this one's kind of fun. I, I haven't, I've only used it one time, um, but it's really great for group writing because you, you sort of contribute to watching this plant over the like 30 minutes or hour of writing time, you watch this plant grow. I don't know, it's, it's just kind of fun. Um, and you build this forest together. Um, the Pomodoro method, I'm sure some of you have heard of, so that's where you, you're writing 20 or 30 minutes and then you take a break and then you jump in again. Um, I will confess that I'm very bad at this. Um, and I, I, I'm one of those people who like a binge writer, I really am trying to knock that habit um, because it's true, you binge write and then you just can't write anymore. So I think it is important um, that I added that um, resource in there specifically because I think it's important to be reminded that you know, you, you have to make this a practice, a regular practice and not just like, oh, the deadline is looming. I have to get a lot of writing done. And then lastly, just mind mapping as an exercise. This was something I also picked up in the workshop I attended um, that, you know, especially if you have a hard time jumping into writing, that maybe you just start with some mind mapping to get your brain functioning. And you just start with some keywords and sort of branch out. I mean, it can also be a, a brainstorming tool for the writing, but I, but I love this idea of like warming up. So it's not just like you open up Google Docs or Word or, uh, you know, you, you're, you're or Scrivener and you're looking at this text knowing that you have to get something done. All right, I'm done. Amazing, love it. 
Um, and then uh, really quickly, I want to actually ask Patricia's question, and then I'm then I want to hear from Audra. But um, Patricia asked, I don't know if you saw this, Anne. Um, so how do you find writing partners from other disciplines? The three of us can probably also talk about it because I have some experience with that too, and I I think Audra does as well. But Anne, it sounds like you were part of a, a new faculty group. But do you have any other thoughts about that? Yeah, well, I think it 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 depends. Yeah, I happen to be part of this new faculty cohort and we were already sort of acquainted and we just sort of like, you know, came up to each other. And we're like, Let, let's do this um, because we were all interested. Um, but I think, you know, if you, and I think Lisa mentioned this earlier, like check with your, you know, uh, like faculty resources on your campus, they might be able to get you connected. But I would also say anybody that you've collaborated with, whether they're, you're there at your institution or another institution, that's another great way. Um, a really good friend of mine, um, she is in another discipline and she's at another institution and we have writing times together. They're much more informal. Um, but I, I think you just start with like people that you're connected to. Um, but also, I think that helps in that it gives you a sense of what the level of commitment is going to be. Um, that's not always the case. But I think, you know, if, if it's somebody that you've worked with before, even if it's just an acquaintance, um, but you know that person is also working on some writing projects, that's a great way to just say, hey, what do you think about meeting once a week or once every two weeks or whatever it is to, you know, to write online together? Awesome. And then Audra, I don't know if you want to answer that question, but then also tell us about your experiences just, with writing. I would really go, I mean, in terms of where you find people, you know, what is your core motivator, right? Is it to find people who are writing on the topics and sort of subject matter that you are that may or may not be on your campus? Is it finding support? You know, some of the whole, and uh, I won't get too specific, but the whole like peer review process for submitting your articles can be absolutely brutal and demoralizing, right? So can the tenure process. And so this can be a way to form support groups that may be on your campus, they may not be on your campus. And again, like, what is your priority? There are all sorts of right answers here. Um, so I, um, uh, like Lisa said, I participated in a lot of different kinds of groups. I participated in an advanced group. So this is part of an NSF grant that University of Maryland had, and they would set up colleagues from across the campus. The benefit of that was I was meeting colleagues across the campus. I was already tenured, but if you're um, pre-tenure, if you're, you know, tenure track, or if you're even between associate and full, you know, getting that perspective, that cross-campus perspective about your institution and making those relationships can be like this benefit, you know, outside of your writing group. Um, it was kind of a small writing group. And so, but that to me, I could see would be a beneficial, but um, like Anne and I write a lot about kind of social justice design. And um, so it was important for me to find other people people who would give me feedback on that kind of content. So she and I with some other people. And honestly, it started after, I think, Make in Indianapolis. Is that right, Anne, that we started that? It was one of those. Anyway, it was after Design Education Conference. I'm fired up. I need to do this. And I just started reaching out to people. And like for me, I was looking for feedback at that point. And, and one of the people we invited to be in the group was it comfortable with the peer review process? For me, it was very much a part of the culture at University of Maryland. I was getting a PhD in sociology at that time. We were all the time looking at other people's stuff, but this person wasn't comfortable with doing that. No, okay, you know, respect that. You know, we'd love to have your voice. You, you know, you're also kind of on this, you've planted your flag here too. But so some people, for whatever reason, may not be able comfortable whatever to join your group um, but the accountability groups and so we had a spreadsheet for that and you know one month you know I would have an article up and then the next month and there were like five or six of us in that group which was a good amount of time like you can't you're not going to have I'm not going to have an I should just speak for myself I'm not going to have an article a new fresh article <laughs> ready to review every month but you were kind of rotating in you were seeing what other people were it wasn't this onerous thing for that group alone. It was about writing and writing feedback. 
part of what we would do when we would meet would be the supportive let's look at our spreadsheets like Ann talked about and are you getting things done what were your goals that you said last month last meeting that you were going to do I'm going to finish this chapter I'm going to get an IRB in. I'm going to get a grant proposal right writing doesn't have to be the book it could be whatever and we were cool with that we did have some sort of bylaws that we sort of just I don't know we copied and pasted from a bunch of stuff to make sure everybody was on the same page sorry um about you know just about you know what are we doing what are we committing to you know in exchange for us giving you all of this feedback also means next week when your article is in on the spot just like critiques in classrooms blah 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 so anyway whoever makes the most sense for you and there may be multiple right answers that maybe people on your campus is a good way to get to know there may be you know people across the design educator community or outside whatever you know that starts to make sense for you um, and then I've also been in these accountability groups, which are also really, really great. Again, um, I think there's this Hollywood idea, again, I'll speak from a person perspective of like, you just sit down and write and you type and it just goes and goes and goes, right? You know, you see this like B-roll of this person just sitting and typing and typing. What you find out is no, everybody just kind of goes like this in front of the screen with you too. And, you know, and you, you feel them struggling in a good way with the process of writing, as well as like, as Lisa's talked about the BIC, the button chair kind of moment that you're trying to do. <laughs> Sorry, um, that is my dog. Hello, um, family just got back. So hopefully there won't be much more dog interruptions. <laughs> I, I can mute it that fast. Sorry. Okay. So dog is okay. Anyway, so, you know, finding your people, right? Whoever your people are. And again, Part of the group that um, the feeding feedback group began was to be the support for each other, to support each other in writing, to give critique and feedback, but not in a way that you feel like, oh, I should just give up, you know? And I mean, you know, I, it, and that again, that demoralizing piece, like, okay, this doesn't make sense, but here's something, blah, blah, blah. And again, that's the group that you trust, like Lisa talked about. And who are those people? And it doesn't have to be a softball team. You know, we had like five or six people, you know, in that, and that was actually plenty to kind of rotate through. It may be two or three, and then you set up whatever schedule for your, you know, to get that feedback on. And they could do the accountability piece of writing stuff too. You know, again, there are lots of right answers about how you want to set that up. And then I've even done last summer, last summer, I even did a writing group where we just pretty much um, well, I don't think we ever zoomed together, but we just kind of had this spreadsheet where we would put in what we were doing, what are our goals, how's it going, oh, it stinks, you know, whatever, hey, you know, you're doing this, I'm, you know, I'm struggling to, you know, so again, there's a lot of ways to feel connected, particularly in the pandemic when we're all scattered and social distancing and blah, blah, that you can, in a good way, feel that struggle together, so. Oh, um, I do want to talk about the National Center for Faculty Development and Diversity. Um, so your institution may have a membership. Um, I, I have no idea how much it costs, but check into it. One of the things they do, they put out a weekly newsletter. Um, I feel like a little bit like I'm selling Amway products, but they put, put out a weekly newsletter. Um, this just encouragement, and it's about tenure, it's about writing, it's about getting it done, um, you know, uh, for that. But also too, what they'll do is offer groups, you know, different kinds of group, a two week faculty, Faculty, you commit to writing 30 minutes every day. You get some of the access to their resources. Generally, it's for free. Depends on like what the length of that writing group is and what then what obviously where your institution um, situation is or is not. Um, but it's a really great support group. Um, they have this great timer that you can see like how much you've written per minute um, in there. So if um, I think Lisa's got that information, the link in there in those um, Google slides. So check that out. I've, that's been really, had been really helpful for me um, at different points. I even joined like one of these 14 week um, groups and it was essentially the same kind of thing. You got connected to people also in the groups across different disciplines and different institutions. I found that I really liked my people better, the people that I knew, the people that were doing my kind of work. But again, there are multiple kind of right, right answers, whatever worked for me or may not work for you. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And then something that I just wanted to make sure that I said too, is that don't feel like 
this is only useful if you're writing a book or if you're on the tenure track. It's not. Uh, there's so many things that as designers and as academics and teachers that we do where having an accountability partner is hugely beneficial. So I've seen a lot of people do grading parties, which can be really helpful, right, for the agony of that, right, to make sure butt and chair you're doing it and you're not alone. Um, but I've also seen it work really well, even if you want just help because you're writing an abstract, right, for a conference or you're working on a really like um, challenging design project or even thinking about putting together your syllabus and your, you know, the projects for your class, right, for teaching. So don't feel like this isn't available to you if you are not, you know, one of those like quintessential academics. This is this can be helpful for all sorts of different kinds of tasks that we do. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of make sure that I said that, yeah, rewriting your classes, right, that it can be so helpful and to get that peer feedback or to know that like you have to sign, you're signing up saying you're going to work on this thing at this time. So in terms of my own experiences, and I'm not going to dwell on this for too long because I'd love to hear more questions from all of you. Um, I have uh, at my very first institution, I did a writing group with new faculty, just like Anne did. We actually all met and one of my new colleagues that year was in the theater department. She was a theater historian and she was very, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the right, very nice term to say. She was, she was a lot. But she was also super organized and like had very firm ideas about what a writing group was and what they did and how they operated. But it was fantastic because we had members from all over campus. It was all women, which was really great. And for a long time, it was fantastic. I was a designer. One of my colleagues who is an artist was part of it. And so our work was a little different. We didn't always have writing that we shared, but we gave each other peer feedback. I got to, to Anne's point, I got to read my colleague who was a philosopher. I got to read what she was writing. I got to read all about theater, um, you know? And so that was really great. It was fun, but then also to see how other disciplines organize their ideas was really useful. How do other people write things? What are, what's the tone, what's acceptable? Um, so that was a great group until it wasn't. There were about five or six of us and it actually devolved into a pretty toxic space where most of the time we just vented and complained about everything at work. Uh, and so I, when I left, it was actually a blessing and I felt like a huge weight was sort of lifted from me. But the thing that that group did that was great was that every week we met every week and we met in person because this was a long time ago, uh, but we had to set our goals and then the first thing we did was we had to say, did we achieve our goals? And then we were either cheered or sort of booed, right? Whether we did or not. And we tried to all be very honest. And then, you know, we, we set new goals for the next week and had we, we told each other if we didn't think we were being realistic. So that was really helpful too, because people would be like, I think you're taking on too much. I don't think you can do that. Um, so that was helpful. And then we would read each other's work. And like Audra mentioned, we would swap, right? So it would rotate through all five or six of us until, and then you would get the, the you know, the, the sixth week, and then you wouldn't go again for another six weeks. And so that was really helpful. Um, so that was a great group. Um, I have, you know, been writing with Audra for a very long time now, which has been hugely beneficial, but I also was part of a, a interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary writing group at Maryland as well. And there was a historian in there. Um, and someone from English. And so that was great because again, it was all sorts of different disciplines um, and they gave great feedback on my writing, which was super helpful, but then I'm a good proofreader so I could help them too. Um, so, and then I would also say, try lots of different things. So Audra mentioned doing the spreadsheet. We did that last summer. Uh, I was terrible at the spreadsheet. I was never, I would, I was not accountable and I felt like the worst person ever. It just didn't work for me. I would forget to go there. And so that's a drag. And it, I'm sure it was a drag for everyone else who was participating, right? Like Lisa. So Lisa's a ghost now. She's not coming. So it's okay if you figure out the thing doesn't work for you. I think it's just really important to be honest with the people you're trying to create a group with and try different things out because not everything is going to work for everyone. You really have to see what keeps you motivated, what keeps you moving forward, what gets you so that you want to do the work. Um, and uh, we kind of talked about this before we every, we let everybody else in the room, but Anne kind of mentioned it's very fluid, right? Like the same thing isn't always going to work. Things will change. Situations will change. And so that's just something to kind of keep in mind too. I'll stop talking now. Questions or other things that Anna and Audra want to add? 
I see there's a question. How do you manage different levels of experience on the same writing group? Um, That's a good one. You know, I, I don't think um, in all the different groups, I don't think it's been an issue. I think there might be an issue if you're working across different disciplines, you know, and I don't know anything about biochemistry. I mean, I shouldn't, you know, I can probably get through the first sentence of biochemistry or whatever, right? So there may be subjects, um, but I think everybody brings something and it's all valid because your readers are gonna be on all different levels, right? So it's fine if, you know, you all aren't, the Langston Hughes or whatever, you know, and actually it can be intimidating if there is a Langston Hughes in there because I'm like, you know, I, so I think having the right personalities in your group and having that understanding of support and, and, you know, and just being honest, you know, we were supposed to, in the group that Anne and I were in, you know, we would review other people's work and there were some months, you know, uh, October where I could read more some, you know, and read more carefully and give more feedback, you know, December grades are due and forget it. And oftentimes we would just kick it to January because like nobody has time, you know, has a spare bandwidth to do that. So, you know, I think it's really more, I would encourage, you know, thinking less about experience in writing and more about getting people who you feel comfortable with, you know, um, you know, Lisa's has seen me at all sorts of stages of, of makeup and lack thereof. And I just finished working out and I'm all sweaty, but I'm ready to write or whatever, you know, I mean, just, you know, I, yesterday I met with her and I had, I just, I had just, you know, I've been able to get to the shower and get out and my hair was still wet, but like, okay. And that's where the story, Alberto of you keeping her picture of Lisa with her towel wrapped around her head came from anyway. Um, but find people who you're comfortable with, find people who you trust, and that matters more than the writing experience. And then people are gonna be there for you. They're gonna show up. They're gonna give you the best they can with feedback. And um, particularly with a group, again, just like in a critique in a classroom, you know, all these different voices and pieces who coalesce mostly generally in theory to give you the kind of feedback that you want. Yeah, I was. I would add to that what Audra was saying. Um, yeah, it just I have different writing partners for sort of different needs. Like some things are scheduled, but some things are just randomly. Like I'm online writing. Whoever wants to hop on, here's a link. Um, and some people are really regular about that. Some people pop in and out. But it does. Um, you know, I, I think there's an understanding that we need to focus on writing. And so, but you know, sometimes maybe we stop and chat a little bit, but um, it does it does help forge a level of um, community that I, I find I really need in order to be successful with writing, in order to be able to get it done. Um, but I also want to mention too, that I, I think it's important to um, consider reflecting on the writing process. So the, the writing that we did last year with, uh, that I did with Lisa and Audra, I think Ann McDonald was also in that group. Um, it was helpful, but, but it can be a little bit intense. So in that particular setup, you know, we were commenting on other people's you know, writing and it's, it is, the upside is that it feels very supportive that you have other people who are reading what your, your reflections about your writing and the things that worked and things that didn't work and what you accomplished. Um, but that can add another layer of, or level of time commitment in terms of, you know, responding to everybody. Um, so there, there are benefits to it for sure. Um, but it, it just depends depends on what you're looking for. But I do think in some shape or form, it is important to reflect on your own writing process. Um, in the writing log that I keep, there is a column for like how to go. Um, and I have a sort of a note in that column about the ways in which I mentally um, sort of disparage myself, like comments about, you know, like negative comments about, oh, I didn't get as much done as I wanted to, or like, I'm a complete failure. And, just a reminder that I need to try to avoid those negative thought patterns. Um, but it is helpful to kind of read back through even, you know, from, from a few years ago, like comments about how I was feeling about writing. 
um, because there are those periods where maybe you're, you are really struggling and you feel like you aren't getting a lot accomplished. But then you also track the, the times that you're having a really positive writing experience and you are getting a lot of things done. So I think, you know, whether it's, it's five minutes or 15 minutes, um, spending some time just even reflecting on your writing process and considering like what worked well. Um, do I write better in the morning, afternoon, evening? Like what are, you know, are there places like rooms where it's better for me to write than others? Those sorts of things can be really helpful observations even as you are engaged in the writing process. And I would say it takes a village. So I've tried all sorts of different things. A writing group doesn't always, isn't not always necessarily gonna be the people that I trust to then like, proofread my work, right? Or really give me a good solid editorial review of my work. And I've been in all sorts of different groups with all sorts of different people who felt like they could write or not. And generally everyone has something to bring to the table. So the ones where we are reviewing work, even the people who maybe aren't strong, structural, grammatic writers, they'll be able to look at your argument and say, I don't understand this, right? Or they'll ask really interesting questions that you hadn't considered before. Um, I'm actually bad at that, but I can tell you if your grammar is good or not, right? So everyone kind of has um, their own sort of skills and gifts that they can bring to the group. And so I think having those different levels is not a bad thing at all, right? Because everybody then kind of just brings a different perspective and everyone can learn from each other. And then you just know, okay, if I really just need someone to proofread this, I'm not gonna ask that person, but maybe this person can do it. Or you just need to find somebody outside of the, of the group to help with that. So it was a great question. Thanks, Audra, for finding that. That must've been in the Miro board. Um, but what else? Other questions you all have? And I can pop in there and see if there are more, but other things you wanna talk about. I see it's 3.52, but I think we still have a bit more time. I, I, I have a question about uh intellectual property and crediting because if people are reading your work when it's uh, being assembled and it's still in this like um developing matter like how do you go about this do you thank your writing group and that's enough is there is there a point that they become a co-author because their insight was so big i you know maybe that was too extreme of, on my end but but it's that kind of line of thought that i have a question about writing uh, because you know we tend to, you know, at least in my end, I was taught that, yes, you collaborate in projects, but I was taught that writing is like this your own thing and you do your own writing. And, you know, the idea of the group is totally opposite to how I was taught to write. Even in the graduate experience, it's my, my book, my, my project, my thing. So I am loving what I'm hearing of the opportunity to write as a group. It sounds fantastic. Well, I think uh, Audra might. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Audra. I would think about it like the design process, right? You often ask people to, you know, give you feedback on your designs, right? And that doesn't mean that they then suddenly have ownership of that, you know, but it's feedback. And that's, and that's also the shared understanding, like for our group that did the feedback, we had, you know, bylaws, you know, or um, sort of a shared agreement that we're going to do this, you know, that we're going to give feedback equally, you know, um, I don't think we had anything specifically about credits, you know, if it were something like an article, probably not. And in some of the stuff was just like proposals, which you don't give credit and authorship, but you know, for a book, yeah, maybe that in an acknowledgement, you know, thanks for the feedback. You often see that from in the peer review process, you know, thanks for the peer review, anonymous, blah, blah, you know, feedback, it was helpful. And that's to the level that, the understanding that I had with the, the group. So um, I would just say whatever is that shared understanding that your group has about how you want to operate. I don't believe that if somebody's giving you feedback, they're not really contributing intellectually to that content. Um, they're just helping you kind of shape that content and it's a reciprocal, right? Then I'm not asking to be co-author on theirs and they're not co-author on mine. But that's also, again, an agreed Point, you know, sort of um, process. Yeah, I, I agree with Audra. I think really it's it's about the expectations that you have for your group. I mean, I can see that wanting to be something to be clarified if you are 
planning to provide feedback with like people that you don't know or that you haven't worked with before. Um, but one of the writing groups that Audra and I are in, like, I think that that was one of the issues why one person wasn't comfortable with being in. Like she, she wasn't clear on like, like she was thinking about it from that vantage point and wasn't really completely comfortable. But I think for most of us, um, it isn't, yeah, it's not even, it's not even a, a question really. It's just your, your, yeah, it's like the design process. You're getting feedback. Um, and I also wanna add to that because I think it's a really important point that um, once I started to think about writing that way, it, it actually freed me because <laughs> I, I tend to be like Sarah knows this. I tend to be a perfectionist and like, it has to be perfect. <laughs> she's, she's smiling, she knows. Um, it has to be perfect before somebody else sees it. And, you know, really that's not the way. I think it's actually better to have people giving you some feedback or at least reading what you're writing before you think you're gonna send off this perfect thing to submit somewhere. Um, I think that's a hump that, that mentally I've had to get over and writing in a group has really helped with that. And Anna. one more thing, oh, um, uh, uh, sorry, um, for Alberto. Um, you know, for book proposals, people give you feedback about whether or not this is a good book proposal. You know, for peer review articles, people give you feedback and they don't become authors. So it's that same vein of how these groups work. And again, it's the shared understanding, but I think it's it's practice out there. It's just kind of, how do you think about it? You know, so they don't become authors, but they are really playing a key role um, in that process and how you acknowledge them or not is kind of up to you and also up to the group and up to what the product is, you know? I mean, you don't really acknowledge people in grant proposals or something like that, but you would in a book maybe. So it just, it's all, it's all great. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's a lot like when I work with students in the classroom, they'll have ideas and then we all sit together and try to help them make their very best idea, but we don't necessarily think about that as ownership. And generally, if you set things up correctly, everyone's really generous with that, right? Because we just want everyone else to succeed. When my student gives a, the other student the, the thing, right? The hook for them to really create something amazing, everyone's just excited and no one's like, well, that was my idea, um, but you have to set it up the right way, right? Because if someone does have that expectation, then there'll be problems. But I haven't found it to be too too much of a problem um, in the groups that I've been in. Everybody's usually just very generous because we're all trying to do the same thing. <laughs> we're all trying to do the same hard thing. <laughs> but so, what else? Other questions? We can look at the mural border if people just want to unmute and ask something. Go ahead. I'm gonna call out one of the questions um, that I see. How do we measure effectiveness of writing? That's a really good question. I'm not sure I know how to answer it, but I, I'm gonna ask that on behalf of uh, Prescott, I think yeah. we put it out there. Yeah, like most of my um, questions or remarks, they, they start with a version of, does anyone else? And <laughs> I feel like uh, since, um, since doing this role three, three academic years, most of what I've written has been the the internal course content uh, for the two main classes. And in both of those, basically wrote a book, you know, and I mean, numerous bespoke lessons, uh, not quite a transcription of what was said, but, you know, if you weren't there in real life, you could sort of read it almost like a really long blog post. And I don't know if, if that matters. <laughs> like, I don't know if people are reading it if they're enjoying it and I don't know, maybe that's very specific because it's, it's not, there's not like a grant attached to it. It's like, oh, that was really good. Here's $1.3 million, you know, that, I don't know, again. Well, why are you writing it and who's your audience? Well, and I, I don't mean that like critically, but I mean, just like that, I mean, those are core questions. Like yeah. what is motivating you to spend your time, your brain width, you know, your bandwidth, all your brain cells to do this instead of something else, right? Are you sure. getting out of it for tenure or not what you need to get out of it, what you want to get out of it? And you were doing that at the expense of something else, you know, even yeah. going to like chill and, you know, so 
Um, and I think that's where you evaluate the success of it, right? And if it is something that's required for your tenure packet, then I would be getting to faculty because it sounds like that's a lot of time that you're investing into something about teaching that most likely is not going to make or break your tenure packet. I don't yeah. know your institution. I don't know what, you know, what your situation is, but I would before, I would encourage you before you invest too much more time in such a detailed description, you may be at a teaching institution. And so then you need to get student feedback. And then that way, you know, it may actually be worth your time. And I'm sorry, I'm talking about this in a really negative way. But when I hear you talk about that, I'm thinking, that's a lot of time that you're spending on this one thing. Is it is it worth that, right? And that's where, that's one of the reasons why I started the accountability writing groups is because I was the program director and I could get totally swamped in academic advising and answering emails and all that stuff, right? That's not tenure, that's not promotion, that's not significant in the research slash creative scholarship. And that's what the accountability groups were. Like, we're not supposed to be checking our email and every once in a while, you know, you just can't, right? And so Prescott, you know, ask yourself like, what, where does that go in your tenure pile? If you're a tenure track, and, or just where does it go just in terms of order of courts? It may be something you need to do just to organize your life in terms of teaching, but that's for you to evaluate, is that successful? Is that level of detail necessary? And it may be, and it may not be. And then what, yeah. what can you pick up? In so to, I know a lot of that was rhetorical, especially because <laughs> I'm, I'm not tenure track. Um, but as a designer, I, and you know, this is my first full-time teaching role. So I still, I still think of myself as a designer, you know, catch me in a few months, you might Think of me again as a designer. Uh, ominous foreshadowing. So as a designer, it's this idea of, of craft and of work product. And what, what did you make? What did you leave behind? What, where are you demonstrating mastery for the students? Because in a, I think, in a non-academic subject like graphic design, a business-focused subject, the students need to know that you are not just the person employed to teach the course, but you are a master practitioner. And everything from the diagrams that we create to the, the links that we arrange in a neat way to, to just the logic of the classes, um, that feels to me like my, my output, my portfolio. And so I take it seriously from that point of view, but <laughs> this is where it becomes therapy. So cut me off, please. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. No, let me finish the sentence. M dash. Uh, I recently found out, and I'm sure this has happened to many other people, that, that the schedule is changing. And one of the classes that I put a lot of effort into is being given to someone else. And I'm moving. It's, it's kind of like the, um, the hermit crab shells. You know, someone retired, someone else becomes the program chair. I get one of her courses. A rookie is coming in. She's getting my course. So I'm taking over this course from our you know, our veteran colleague and it's, it's crap. There's nothing there. There's like, where's the beef? You know, it, it basically is a, a bunch of bullets that says, read the textbook, see you on Thursday. And uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, so I have a few thoughts cause I've also been in a non tenure track situation. And in fact, that position was three, three. And I was still trying to build that. The key was, I was still trying to build a research trajectory on top of that. So part of, I guess part of my suggestion or thought for you is like, you know, in addition to even, you know, regardless of whether you're tenure track or non-tenure track, are you pursuing the things that you're interested in doing? And it's really about making time for those things, whether it's additional design work or writing or whatever it is. I would also say though, that in addition to practice, like design practice and that being something that's really important for us to have is like writing about your practice because that that also is a form of 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 um i'm not sure you know in terms of terminology whether we're talking scholarship or research but i think that that's actually really important too um and audra has has done that right like she has did this um huge project she collaborated with i think this was with ann mcdonald um and they wrote about it and it was published in an academic well probably more than one academic journal but the thing is that even the things that you're doing through your pedagogy 
um, that that's, you know, that's writing. Uh, it's related to research. Um, it can be part of your trajectory. And so I think that, you know, this, we, we sort of have to move past this notion that, you know, as design educators, that um, first of all, that, that it's only about being in a tenure track position. Like, I, I think it's still important to have your own goals and aspirations for your academic career, regardless of what your status is. Um, so it's like making time for that. But that also it's really important to be reflective of the things that you're already doing and write about those things. Yeah, I've been trying and to dust off my be? blog for three years. I haven't since I moved to Arizona, I haven't written a blog post in it. If and so not what that is anyone the blog looking, serve but... for you? Yeah, what is the blog serve for you? Is that kind of a pet project? Is that a release? Is that something that might actually um, be peer reviewed that might work into a body of work? You know, so I mean, and it's a very faculty oriented way of thinking about which bucket is this thing that I'm doing going to fit in, right? Is it going to fit into service? Is it going to fit into teaching? Is it going to fit into um, research creative scholarship? You know, and so, and, I, you know, not all universities want the same size buckets of everything, right? And so, and what gives you uh what keeps you doing what you want to do you know is writing your blog some sort of therapy release something that feels that clears your mind so that you can do grading you can do writing you can do something else you know and that's where like you know what what do you want to get out of it where do you want to be in the five years you know think about that and is this blog getting you there you know, and it may not, and it doesn't have to be within an academic position. Again, it could just be feeding that, you know, that, that, you know, outs non-job, you know, my personal life, my, you know, my balance, whatever, you know, so, um, and whether you're tenure track or not, as Anne, you know, has, uh, you know, has mentioned, which is, you know, really important. They're not all, not all academic positions are the same and not all, they, not all, not all academic institutions are the same, which adds to the fun, right? Because there's there's multiple like levels of games and rules and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, why do you do it? Are you doing it because you feel like it's an expectation of the job? Then find out if it really is. And also too, like I would nitpick lectures and type and all this kind of stuff, you know, for hours for like a 20 minute thing that students, you know, are on their phones through half of it, right? So where is the payoff and like you know what are you doing this for are you getting to wow them and are they wowed you know are you doing it for something else you know and again that also goes to who's your audience what's your motivation and what else might you want to be doing with your time that you can't because you're spending it here and that may be legit and you may like no I mean I I could Lisa and I've had many conversations where we could just totally obsess about writing and lectures and this and more sources and you know and it could just be perfect all imperfect I'm like yeah but then that's like 80 hours a week and then I didn't get anything else done and that's the juggling I was going to say like that uh, being in a tenure track position does make it easier to prioritize. It forces a kind of prioritization, um, but the challenge is still the same, really, when it comes to how you're managing the things that you want to do in your time. That was awesome. That was a great lively discussion. Thank you, Prescott, for asking that question. I don't know that we answered your question, but a lot of food for thought. Uh, so it's 4.09. Uh, we could probably pull out a few more minutes if people want, but I also don't want to keep people. It's a Wednesday afternoon uh, for, you know, you might have things that you want to go do and I, I don't know. So I don't know. Are there other lingering questions or other things people want to ask or talk about or say um, before we kind of wrap it up? Hmm. I would just say, if you want to be in a writing group, do it, you know, I mean, I, I had, I don't think I had officially been, maybe I'd been in one writing group, writing group, um, and I just, I knew kind of abstractly what they were, but I knew that I needed, like, uh, some sort of level of support, and that's when I reached out to Anne and some other people, because I needed, I really was looking for people who were doing social justice design, 
and I wanted those people. And then, you know, they told two friends and kind of things. So I got people that I didn't necessarily know. But I, 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 you know, then we just, then we made up the bylaws, right? So don't let the idea of perfection keep you from, you know, getting the kind of accountability, support, whatever that you need. You know, Lisa and I write t- uh, twice a week generally. Um, uh, and McDonald and I write once a week, you know, and that there's no one right answer. Sometimes we've all been in the same group. And Barry does this incredibly brave thing where she just sends out an email and says, I'm writing from 1.30 to 4.30. Anybody wants to hop in, hop in, which makes her on the hook for nothing else, on, you know, hosting a Zoom session, you know, and then you go in and like, there are these other people who are like, you know, fighting the good fight to, um, so it can happen in all kinds of ways. And if, you know, again, there's no formal thing, reach out, chances are other people are looking for the same kind of support. The other benefit about writing together in that way is that you also see people taking breaks, which I think is important to remind you to get up and take a break. So we do get up and pee. We do get up and get snacks, <laughs> get up and stretch. You know, spouses might come in, pets do things, right? It's not like you're just like chained to your your computer typing the whole time, smart stuff. Sometimes I don't type anything for a really long time (laughs) where I'm jotting down notes or I'm just, it's like agony, but you see people doing the work, putting in the time. The other benefit about those is that I have to put them on my schedule. We schedule them twice a week, every week. And then I have to set that side of time because I'm going to, I'm going to meet with Audra and I care about Audra. She matters to me and I care about getting that work done. Uh, so that can be really beneficial too. Whereas I wouldn't schedule it for myself, right? I wouldn't honor myself in that way. When I have someone else in the mix, it, it forces me to do it, which is, which is a huge benefit. So yeah, I would say, just try it. And again, you don't have to be writing a book you don't have to be writing a dissertation. You don't have to feel like you, you know, you're writing some crazy high level. Writing is great just to put it out there. Talk about the things you're doing in the classroom or the things you're doing as a designer. Um, there's lots of ways that we communicate. And I think all of those are really valuable and needed and worth putting the time in for. So anyway, any other thoughts, comments, and anything you want to add? Oh, I was just going to add, I think I put this in the chat earlier that I think that the other sort of misnomer is that, um, you know, we're told this during these writing workshops, right, that, you know, especially if you have a day, let's say an afternoon of like two, three hours, and you think, oh, I'm going to get so much done, I'm going to be so productive, but it's easy for that time to fly by. Whereas on a busy day, you just think, I just don't have time. So I think it's even more important to, to sort of get over this mental hurdle of, I have to have at least an hour chunk of time to get any writing done, um, that there's a lot you can accomplish even in 15, 20 minutes. Um, And so thinking about even those small things, those things on the back burner, like the abstract or, you you know, if it's a letter of recommendation, whatever it is, I think sometimes for me, I'm like, oh, it won't take me very long to get that done. So I'm just going to put it on the back burner and then it doesn't get done. Right. So I think like, especially when you have smaller chunks of time, th- those writing obligations are still important. Um, so just seeing any minute of time that you have to write as being valuable, I think is really important. Even if it doesn't feel like you're getting a lot done or it doesn't feel valuable, you're already one step ahead of where you would have been if you hadn't taken those even five, 10 minutes to sit down and write. Amazing. All right, well, so I'm going to just thank both of my panelists, the amazing Ann Barry and the amazing Audra Buck Coleman. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us and share your expertise and your, your experiences and all the things. You both are fabulous and I adore you. And thank you so much, everyone who came to join us for this session today. I so appreciate you taking the time. Um, so I'm actually going to stop the recording um, right now. So here we go. I'm stopping.